speaker now our third speaker is professor dr mohammad sharifuddin dr sharifuddin is a professor of computer science and engineering department of jahangir university he has received his doctor of engineering degree in information sciences uh, from kyoto university japan he did his master from singa university and bachelor degree from buet he has second master degree from institute of business administration jahangir university he has published more than 100 article in uh, peer reviewed international journal and conferences he is the senior member of ieee he is the last uh, the past chair of ieee computer society bangladesh chapter he is fellow at ieb ex chair of uh, ex vice chair of ieee bangladesh section and vice chair of bangladesh computer society now i would like to request our next speaker professor dr sharifuddin to present his uh, slides Uh, thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yeah, you are audible, but share your slide. Yes, yes, yes. We can see your okay? slide. Full screen. Would you please put? Uh, I mean, the, put it in the presentation mode. Yes, yes. Now, okay? thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, very warm welcome to you all. I am Muhammad Shreebuddin. So my special thanks to Professor Shamim Kaiser for uh, in, taking the initiative to organize this uh, timely event. I also thank the IEEE Computer Society Bangladesh chapter for organizing this event, and also thank all the participants. and my two previous distinguished speakers professor shodol kedar who is an ieee fellow and um, professor dr mukti mahamud um, a very renowned data scientist so thank you all i am very much grateful to you uh, to giving me an opportunity to discuss something so my talk mostly just Uh, applications of AI in these uh, pandemic situations. So may I start uh, going to my talk? So especially so I will talk about though uh, my two previous speakers uh, explain in details uh, the brief introduction on COVID nineteen and. and its different types of modeling and and data data science perspective so though uh, but i am just giving a very very short introduction and mostly my my talk is concentrate my talk will concentrate on ai applications ai and machine learning applications and i will show some scopes for our young researchers to concentrate Uh, to fight against this pandemic so finally i will conclude my talk so already we already know that it is an ards acute respiratory syndrome syndrome disease covid 19 and there are different types of test available so the very uh, very genuine test and almost uh, uh, with minimal false negative and uh, this is the viral test and uh, this is also called pcr test and some some rapid tests are also they are mostly they are looking for antibodies not for the virus this is the serological test and uh, though the previous speaker also told about some test about the radiological test though the authenticity of this radiological test is still lagging behind and because of uh, data availability and also the the analysis perspective so anyway and we are we have won a war about the global uh, global 
statistics of this pandemic. So almost uh, 40, 47 lakh people are uh, confirmed and the death toll also uh, more than three lakhs. And the recovery is also very, very good, the 38.1. 17%. Though people, the disease, the recovery rate is uh, uh, around 40%, but people are worried, and that's why so so much uh, panic situation is prevailing uh, in the globe. But uh, if you look at the Bangladesh perspective, say uh, the recovery rate, rate is almost half, 19% compared to the global, I think it will be increased. But the death toll is very, very low. And so uh, it is a very good sign for us. Anyway, and the previous speaker also talked about the new intervention and all pandemic situations is rapidly at first as, as because it is an infectious disease. So one person will contaminate many persons. So there, there is a model in uh, contamination or spreading. So if there is no intervention, then the peak will be very rapidly, uh, rapidly very high, but with intervention, it is uh, going to be flat, uh, almost flat. So our, our approach is just to help the how we can, uh, uh, we can confirm the, that is the hygiene situation, personal social distancing, and environment cleaning, and these type of, some types of delivery, some types of logistic support. So this type of intervention normally uh, helps our healthcare systems, our country, and all, all over the humanity. So this is uh, the, the place where uh, we computer scientists, I think if here most of us, the almost 100, uh, 170 participants are uh, in this uh, platform now. So uh, among these participants, mostly all are computer scientists. So I think we can do, we can concentrate or we can focus our uh, concentration on this point to minimize, minimize the effect or to platinum in the spreading car. So the, the, the way we have to fight, that is we, our logistic tools is machine learning. And it is, a, it is a subset of AI that is artificial intelligence. So uh, normally uh, it is a learning based approach. Uh, and there's a, for, for example, big man, uh, uh, some famous persons, uh, just define the, what is learning. So machine learning is a process by which the system improves performance from experience with respect to task. Mostly machine learning works are uh, mostly classifying, clustering, categorization, and recognition problems, planning, predictions, control, and so many ways it can help. And so as because it is a learning-based approach, and the learning can be, we can, we can classify it from, from simple learning to deep learning. So this is a famous example the how we can define geometric shape. So I think everyone, everyone know about it as because it is, a, it is a lecture. So I have to give a very, very brief introduction on machine learning. So if you want to recognize a shape, a geometric shape, yeah, either it is circle, it's triangle, either it's rectangle. So normally we can we can develop a very simple approach. So for example, if there are four corners, it is a quad, quad, quadrilateral. If there are three corners, it is triangle. If there is no corner, it is circle. But is it workable? But it's not so workable. To make it workable, we have to learn or we have to use more different uh, type of features. So our this type of model cannot be cannot be cannot be recognized all the geometric shapes. So that's why from simple learning to deep learning or deep types of representation schemes, we have to involve inside our model. 
So this is the, the difference between simple learning and deep learning. And so machine learning normally, I already already mentioned the, the different types of tasks you can, you can perform by using machine learning. And so uh, our final, final condition just develop a model and apply that this trained model on unseen data to get new predictions. So this is the main motive, main objectives of machine learning. And already I talked about these things. And so in this pandemic situation, what are the prospects of AI? I, at first, I will mention the four, four points. The first one is AI is quite promising in screening, analyzing, tracking, and predicting, predicting the current and future patients of any viral pandemic situation. So this is the one point that almost mostly screening, analyzing, tracking, and prediction. And next tools used for early detection and diagnosis. And uh, it has the potentiality in helping healthcare workers in hospitals and clinics. I already mentioned say, some robotic aspects. So uh, we can develop some um, robot to deliver these types of things so that we can help the hospital workers, we can help the hospital, we can help the clinics, and also uh, it is a great help for the humanity. And it helps, and the, the final class is just helping the development of drugs and vaccines. So this is a very brief, uh, just list of these four categories. And later on, in the later slides, I will show a framework, and then I will I will show some scopes. I will show ten scopes where our computer scientists can work so that uh, we can we can help to combat these pandemic damages. So this is the framework, mostly mostly the COVID-19 that my previous uh, uh, speaker also already told about data, uh, data science. So the first one is data collection. So for example, and this data collection, some, we, can, we, can, we can classify into three classes. One is epidemiological data, clinical data, and the genetic data. And then that data is uh, here, our work, our computer scientist work is here, the data acquisition or data collection, and then use the machine learning or and AI approach to, to work on four domains. The first one uh, is, yes, for example, uh, finding good drugs. And uh, next one is the diagnosis. And the diagnosis means who are affected or who are not affected or different types of predictions, uh, how the, 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 this pandemic is spread or this virus is spread, is spreading or affecting the populations or as well as the nations or as well as the community. And later on, later on uh, the third one is hospital operation, the hospital management. Is the, it is, if, if too many people are affected, it is a great burden for the hospitals, uh, that is for, the, for our healthcare, healthcare service. So that's why we have, to, we have to take the essence of automation. We can help the hospital management system to using our artificial intelligence or machine learning approach or just uh, utilizing, uh, developing different types of robots for medication del delivery or for different types of nursing and different types of uh, protocol hygiene uh, or cleaning. And the final one, the, 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 in this framework, the final one is prevention. Say, uh, you, you know, we, we all know that different groups or different uh, biological as well as computer scientist groups are concentrated on vaccine, vaccine development, that is uh, the future prevention. So these are the mostly the framework where uh, we can concentrate our work and we can help the nations. Then now I'm coming to the, already I talked 
10 different scopes where our computer scientists can contribute or can uh, focus on work so that our uh, community will be benefited. The first one is disease surveillance AI. Disease surveillance AI, say so this is a, um, an AI, which we call a disease surveillance AI, that is predicting the risk of infection of an individual or spread in a community at an early stage. And this mostly different types of age groups. Our previous speaker also different different volumes of data and different types of sources where we can get these data. And especially the, the different types of benchmark data already already developed. Say John Hopkins University, say for example, uh, World Health Organization and other different sites. And also very very good source of data information is our social media. Uh, social media and the, the, the attributes you can use is pre existing condition, general hygiene habits, social habits of community, number of human interactions, frequency of interaction, location, and climate of the country, and social economic status. So, for example, the one solution is viable for Bangladesh, that solution is not viable for, for example, the developed country like like Japan or like Korea or like USA or Canada, these types of, these types of countries. So that's why different types of uh, disease surveillance AI, we, we computer scientists can focus our work on this domain. And next one is predicting the treatment outcome. So if a, if a patient is uh, exhibiting some symptoms. So how likely this patient will survive? So predicting the treatment outcome, the, what treatment will be used to, um, for his uh, survivability? If we can predict the outcomes of the specific treatment methods, then doctors can treat patients more effectively. And already uh, in, in, the, in, in our mass media communications, uh, the television media communication, last, last night I saw uh, in the news that Bangladesh is also also developing different types of treatment, the plasma treatment last um, uh, study at Dhaka Medical College Hospital already started the plasma treatment. And also, uh, so I, I, I heard another news that, uh, that for example, some uh, some some disease is in, in our uh, ears, Say, for example, uh, uh, in Bangla, we can call it Ukun. Say, these types of uh, medicine, just uh, like 30, 30 taka, but it is not confirmed. It is not confirmed. So, drug discovery, that is, the, what types of drug will be, uh, will be, will be effective. That, that prediction is also very important. And uh, because it, it is a time bound problem, it is a time bound problem. If we, if we spend more time, then the, we cannot control the spreading curve. And that's why, that's why AI can be helpful for this type of searching uh, different types of database of medicine to find the specific drugs, or to find the prediction, uh, predict, uh, treatment prediction. The, and num number three is predicting who is at risk of developing severe, severe uh, situation. Uh, for example, on the on the basis of initial symptom. So if we have uh, some different this type of data source, the uh, this type of symptom if initially arise, then this um, this patient will survive or this patient will be very severe consequences, will face very severe consequences ultimately to death. And this type of this type of prediction we computer scientists can do and this will help our doctors or our healthcare system. And number four is machine learning can help screening patients. Say for example the virtual healthcare assistant chatbots and chatbot is a, a we everyone know about the chatbot now it is widely used in business uh, in business business uh, sector but these type of chatbots especially de especially designed for it is a multilingual multilingual uh, question answer session and this uh, chatbot uh, helps uh, uh, provides different types of 
uh, different types of uh, benefits. The first one is reliable information related to COVID-19, clear guidelines, protection re recommendations, checking and monitoring symptoms, identification needs, hospital screening, or self-isolation inside the home. So this type of uh, initial initial query and answer we can get with the help of machine. So uh, uh, our our computer scientists can focus on these types of work. So this is one screen in patient, and the next one is, uh, this is also screening a diagnostic AI. I already, in the first slide, I already mentioned there are three modes of testing, three modes of testing. So this is the, um, it, it is the diagnostic AI detection uh, using X-ray, CT, and MRI, uh, MRI scans. And the, in the last talk, in the last talk, Professor Dr. Mukti Mahmood, and some some audience also, some participants also asked questions about the CT and MRI scan. But a very success story of Darwin AI, and this is a this is a Canadian startup uh, led by Professor Ong. And so the, the COVID-19, COVID-Net, it is known as COVID-Net, it is just CNN-based, convolutional neural network-based and architecture. And very interesting is it is completely open source. Um, and though it initially initially worked on only 60, 60 X-rays, X-ray images, but the data scarcity is a big problem already mentioned in my, uh, my, my, my previous by my previous speakers, but uh, he also showed an, an OI to develop more data, more data by using some types of augmentation or sometimes of uh, using generative adversarial network, which we can produce different types of artificial data by using generative adversarial network. So uh, the details, if someone wants to go to the details, they can go to the uh, details in a, uh, the depository, repository ARXID, and also the, scope, the source is available in, on GitHub. And there are other types of, other types of uh, deep mind also, Blue Dot, Baidu, Chinese uh, Baidu, Pedal Pedal, Alibaba's Cloud, uh, and UK's benevolent AI. So different types of uh, company shows different prospects in diagnostic AI, though it is not still, it is not uh, fully acceptable by the uh, healthcare practitioners. But uh, we have to try, we have to try, or at least we can help Initial help, there is not, I already mentioned, there are three types of testing. Not one, one test is 100% accurate. Though PCR is almost 100% almost accurate, but very close to uh, gold status, but not so. But initially, but PCR is expensive. PCR test is expensive. So we can help, we can help in this OIA the medical practitioners. So, but through diagnostic AI. And uh, we can also, also in air force, in say, in different places, uh, big gathering places, by using some camera, facial recognition and fever detector AI. So this is an one AI, AI brands, we can work on facial recognition as well as fever detector. Uh, to detect individuals with fevers, to track their movements, to recognize their faces, and to detect whether the person is wearing a face mask, uh, mask, uh, he is um, wearing mask, or uh, he is performing the hygiene when he comes from the say uh, from some some dangerous place, or uh, he is uh, performing the hygiene um, um, hygiene task. So these type of things we our our computer scientists can contribute, and I think uh, if they fast, we will get more data. And this is another another very important domain: the logistic support. Logistic support means delivery, as well as medicine delivery, food supply, 
and cleaning cleaning what or uh, uh, tracking individuals or monitoring social distancing this type of, here we can we can work on uh, the computer scientists can work by using utilities and drones and robots by using robots we can do delivering some service, services and china already already in youtube uh, i already downloaded uh, one video from the youtube but uh, the, the our participants and the computer scientists can can find so many videos in videos in youtube they do uh, they are developing robots to help different types of uh, to take in different types of measure counter measures so uh, if uh, if someone interested i can show this type of very very small one minute video i can i can work on this video so there are different types of uh, so if this one is designed for another purpose but now working for COVID-19-19 fighting. This is a food, uh, delivering food supply in hotels and in hospitals, they just talking to patients. In, in, in the, especially in the isolation uh, world and petrol to identify the person uh, by using a uh, temperature, uh, temperature or other types of uh, images, amazing technique. So uh, anyway, anyway, and the, the, the number eight is speeding up drug discoveries and development so there are uh, this is uh, not uh, individual cannot perform this type of uh, work uh, very smoothly they are, we already know different types of groups uh, in say oxford in uh, harvard in other types of different types many is in china there are many types of companies who are working on speeding up drug discoveries and development. I already mentioned in previously also about this topic. There are, there are many, mainly four stages in drug development, identifying tar targets for intervention, discovering drug candidates, speeding up clinical trials, finding biomarkers for diagnosing the diseases. And there are the four types of biomarkers. One is diagnostic biomarker, say the presence of disease, and the risk biomarker, prognostic biomarker means how this is spreading uh, or the disease progress. And the predictive biomarkers, whether a patient will respond to a drug or the, a drug is effective or not. So this type of, it is a hybrid combination and this is a very important area and that's why the different type, different research teams, different companies are working 24 hours almost round the clock to, to develop the speeding of drugs and other types of vaccines. And some some bioinformatics idea, this is, uh, this, is uh, this works, so then I understand the COVID-19 virus, so proteins. Proteins, this is a biomarker, protein-protein interaction uh, between virus and human body cells determines our body's reactions to pathogens that are extremely important in developing new treatments and discovery of new drugs. And finally, curative research AI DeepMind is creating structural models of proteins that have been linked with the virus in a bit to a science comprehension of virus. So about the scientific knowledge, gather the scientific knowledge, the comprehensive knowledge on the virus. So these types of curative research AI uh, can help, say for example, like DeepMind and DeepMind Deep also shows some success too. And finally, uh, I'm coming to number 10, prediction of spread, fishing, stress management, so social networks. I, in the, uh, previously I talked about social media, so prediction AI, information validation AI, stress management AI. So these three AIs 
three branches, uh, our researchers, our computer scientists can very easily uh, concentrate taking data from the social media or taking data from in the different some of these data sources our previous uh, speakers Mukti Mahmood already mentioned in his piece uh, so uh, our our scientists can work on prediction time using social media data and that is, that is fishing or uh, different types of uh, conspiracy theory, misinformation, and different types of, uh, in Bangla we can call guzob, different types of guzob, uh, prohib prohibit karaba, uh, stop kara, uh, information verification AI, and finally the space management AI. We can also, also works on um, uh, taking data from the social media to the, just to evaluate the stress phenomena in uh, in a community or in a specific area, and also my previous speaker pre previous speaker also also talked about the the game theory that is people are against the people are against the lockdown continuous lockdown as because lockdown is a very a very difficult phenomena and it stops our business our incomes and a lot of things so 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 it, it the government is trying to compensate on giving different types of incentives so, so there is a trade-off between incentives and as well as lockdown and so this type of game theory perspective also also very important very uh, very very important and and also the previous uh, professor professor Kedar, the ITP fellow, he also talked about some uh, gave, uh, another another talk is gut theoretic approach. So in in uh, in this domain also we can take some standard data set and data sets are avail avail available data set. So our computer scientists can concentrate their work on this and. So as though this is the last, this is the last talk. So uh, I think I can I can conclude uh, the talk as soon as possible. And so I, finally, I am going to the conclusions. The my my so my conclusions as we are uh, we are computer scientists and we are uh, we know about AI and machine learning strategy. So we use our AI and machine learning tool in fighting the current pandemic. If you take this opportunity to collect data, pull our knowledge, and combine our skills, we can save many lives both now and in the future, and we can help the global community as well as our national community, and as well as for the humanity. And so thank you very much for giving me the nice opportunity to discuss very briefly as because a long time we started at 11 now it's uh, already already uh, one cross 1 pm cross so two hours already already have passed and that's why i am giving very very brief introduction about the the scopes where our computer scientists can concentrate or can focus to do um, some help for the humanity or for the um, for the government for the world so thank you very much from my side. Thank you for your stimulating speech. Uh, I would like to request our audience to raise the question. We will take only two questions. Uh, Kumar, Kumar Utsap. Hello. You any, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for your speech. Uh, we all know that uh, pandemics are not new in this uh, century. So I think uh, more are about to come in the next uh, centuries. Uh, so can we predict what type of uh, 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 pandemics are coming in next? 
So thank you very much. But uh, yes, it is some some types of uncertain uncertainty. So this is a prediction. And already my my previous speaker, Dr. Mukti Mahamud, showed the 600 uh, BC it, it started different types of pandemic situations. From the historical data, if we gather the historical data, normally there is a belief uh, among the people that is after 100 years these pandemic situation coming uh, every 100 years and so we can use the these previous data to predict something and it is not so easy easy task i think we can uh, i think uh, you or or the computer science community computer scientist community can work on uh, using the previous data though this is not 100 percent accurate but uh, still a prediction can be made. Okay, uh, Mohammed Samsul Arifin, I think. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Thank you for coming, sir. sir. And hmm. uh, thank you very much sir, for your presentation. So, sir, one observation from my side, actually uh, about lockdown scenarios uh, throughout the world, there is a uh, whether a lockdown should be open or it, uh, it should be longer. There are some situations. So, sir, can it be possible to consider something or to develop some model that will give some prediction whether lockdown in this area can be okay? At this moment, we can open this area or that area, or we should we must have to make mass longer lockdown in a specific area so if we can uh, develop such a model i think this will be very helpful for the decision makers sir so is there any uh, actually consideration or uh, if you have some suggestion or comments in this regard so oh, thank you very much professor uh, uh, really very good question but uh, I can, uh, my perception, my perception, that is the one point is incentive, in, incentive uh, against uh, the lockdown. This is one criteria. The other criteria to, to uh, stop the lockdown, that is the yes. other criteria is the prediction, uh, the, the uh, spreading date or the de death rate or the effect, affected date. In, rate in, in, in a community. So if we use say, th these types of attributes, we can easily we can easily Consider develop this. a model for the for, for, for the prediction. I think yes. uh, Professor Shodan Kedash already showed a model. Uh, he discussed about the model. So but the problem is the what parameter we have to we have to give input. So I yes. I just mentioned the two parameters for example the work one is incentive the other one is the uh, other one is spreading it uh, and uh, the other other parameter may be death toll so this type of data this type of if we use more attributes then our our uh, i think prediction will be somehow near uh, accurate thank you sir uh, i have seen uh, dr atik ahat he has raised his soft hand uh, mm -hmm. Professor Atik, sir, please. Oh, thank you so much. Sir, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, you covered lots of topics uh, which are very important. Uh, and if anyone can look into this one of my, I have a query like, uh, uh, is there any past work on exploring mobile phone data tracking to understand people, even though there is a huge issue of privacy? But during this period, especially in developing countries where privacy issues are not that much considered uh, logic i mean uh, for different reasons so is there any past works on this issue and can we explore uh, during this covid uh, situation so i don't uh, thank you very much professor i think i had a long time after a long time uh, uh, we are communicating and so uh, it, it, there is no exact answer of, of your query, but uh, but still, the, though privacy is not a big concern in our uh, developing countries, so so there are some some words uh, in the uh, when I, I do the Google search, 
I found uh, different types of words, but not the very specific words that is uh, the tracking the mobile mobile phone. So I think uh, maybe maybe uh, our computer scientists can try can try uh, can try for example in less uh, secure, less privacy concerned area. For example, like the third world country where our privacy in the, in the pandemic, in the pandemic situation is not so severe. Wow, so stringent. Thank you very much, sir. Mm. Okay, dear audience, thank you. Thank you, Professor Sharif, sir, for your kind speech. Thanks. I would like to express our sincere grat gratitude to all the speakers for sharing their expertise with us. And I would like to thank Samin Rahman, Asan Habib, IEEE Computer Society, IEEE Student Chapter, IEEE Computer Society, Buet Student Chapter, IEEE Computer Society, Ruet Student Chapter, IEEE Computer Society, BRACU Student Chapter, IEEE Computer Society, ULAP Student Chapter, IEEE Computer Society, Jahangir University Chapter for their effort. And also thanks to Team Spark and National Youth Wing. And also our, uh, I mean, the design team who actually designed a lot of poster for us. And also I would like to request all the participants uh, uh, for ensuring their registration for the second session, which will held on 31st of this month. So please uh, do your registration. Uh, we can allow only 250 participants in this platform. However, we are broadcasting our uh, transmission through Facebook as well as YouTube and also our uh, lectures are recorded. We will disclose this lecture with the permission of our uh, speaker soon. So thank you very much for your presence. Thank you. And thank you from my side also. So we are closing our event for today's event. So uh, you are invited for the next lecture. Thank you very much.